Hi guys, I'm Iris there. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up a bit. We're going to be interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the business models and financial decisions behind their successful brands. Our guest today is Mr. Wale Shoneko. He's a special advisor on ICT to the executive chairman of FIRS. Stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Hi, Mr. Wale Shoneko. Hi, how are you? Welcome to our show, The Bridge. Thank you for having me. So you're the special advisor to the executive chairman of the FIRS on ICT. Correct. So tell us a little bit about what that entails. Yeah, it entails <laughs> a lot of stuff all around the core business of FIRS, which is generating revenue and taxation. But it also involves us bringing technology to the forefront mm. because that's the way the modern world is working. Um, so part of my task is to ensure that it's working effectively, efficiently, helping FIRS meet its mandate. So basically bringing the traditional FIRS to the future using technology. Correct. Fantastic. Um, tell us, because this show is basically to break down financial issues that bother um, millennials. So we talk about their pain points with money and taxes, one of the biggest mind bogglers for young people in Nigeria. Sure. Um, so. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, why we should pay our taxes in the first place? So, well, speaking from my perspective, I would say that taxation is important because mm. it's our civic duty. This is what we do or we need to do in order to have our country be put or positioned in the right place to sus have sustainable growth. Yeah. Taxation is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. I think the sooner we have... We get with the program. Exactly. <laughs> we're comfortable with that notion the better things will run. Yeah. And by doing that is getting the understanding. Mm. And I think that's what FIS is on the, you know, the charter to do. That's mm. our roadmap is to bring that understanding to mm. the general public. Okay. So from an economics perspective, from an economics perspective, okay. tax is important. So we need tax revenue to run our government, to run right. our country, right. so that we're not dependent on oil revenues alone, right? Sure. Um, so that's great on one hand for the government. But the average Nigerian will probably say something like, listen, the whole point of paying taxes everywhere else in the world is so that the government is um, looking after us. They're providing roads, sure. they're providing power, they're providing security. But in a situation where you're basically acting as your own government, why should I pay my taxes? Because I can't really see the evidence that my tax dollars are being put to good use. So what do you have to say to a person like that? Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm a person like that. <laughs> I'm a citizen of the country. Yeah. But I think what I need to do is that in order to get to that good governance position, we all have to start with the first step. Mm. And this is sort of that, is taking that first step in the right direction. Mm. When we do have everyone complying, and I mean voluntary complying yeah. without enforcement and things like that, what we will end up having is that we have citizens who can hold government accountable. Yeah. At this point in time, we're not all the way there yet. So we can't really stand up and say that. But if we're a taxpayer, like when you go to like developed countries, 
mm. that you know they're paying taxes compliance rate is high you see how they say i'm a taxpayer i pay my taxes you mm -hmm. can't do that they hold government to to, to a high standard yeah. so that's where we want to get to mm. and in order to do that we all it's a group effort we all have to just put our minds to it and say look we're not there yet let's all start taking that first step mm. we start taking the first step it turns to two steps it turns to us mm. running and it turns so to us basically being, you pay first we'll give you the service later not necessarily that <laughs> you start seeing the services but i know that you know in nigeria we all have that notion of now 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 mm -hmm. so we have to understand that things are gradual but we see progression i mean when we joined the fire in yeah. 2016 there's nowhere we are right now in 2018 mm. you can see the consecutive growth as we go in year on year that's a sign that you were building compliance we're building encouraging mm. environments for people and the good part is that our government is is in line with that where they're helping us with enabling businesses they're doing things like uh, ease of doing business okay. those initiatives show that the country is at the point where look value for money it's mm. affecting everyone in all tiers of government all tiers of private sector mm. everybody wants to see value for what they're doing so but do you think that there's an issue with tax education so for say startups they go into business they're married to the idea of what they're doing they're more interested in you know building a brand marketing and you could find the average nigerian entrepreneur does not even have financials so they don't have any balance sheets they don't have any profit and loss statements and so they don't understand that. So tax is like an even bigger afterthought. Sure. So what is FIRS doing to sort of break down this tax education, sure. like break down the jargon in a way that the average person would understand? So I'll answer that in many different ways. Okay. One, entrepreneurial spirit. Every Nigerian has it. Yes. We're all entrepreneurs. We're all governments we're in all ourselves. We're all hustlers. Yeah. <laughs> but then FRS, we focus on corporate. But then the states are responsible for individuals. Mm. Well, part of the initiatives that we did at FRS is that we introduced FEET, mm. which encourages, what, what that does is a, is a unit that goes around foot, on mm. foot, goes around educating taxpayers, educating citizens about taxation, mm. about what's going on, what we're doing, initiatives we're driving. We also do a lot of jingles, ads, proposals. Mm. We roll out a lot of things yeah. to the media. But it happens on state level. Every state government has their own IGR, mm. which is their own internal generated revenue board that does their own different various initiatives. Mm. They go to local rural, um, rural local leaders, yeah. like the Obas and stuff, and educate them. And they do it in local languages. So that they can yeah, pass so that, that they can on. pass it on to the informal sector, the unbanked, the, the people that even are working and Okay, Wale, sure. let's be practical because sure. all the things that you're saying about IGR, it sounds like one 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 to my audience. <laughs> <laughs> like the reality is, so for example, I work in financial education yeah. and in trying to reach the audience that I'm targeting, yeah. the millennial audience, yeah. I found that I have to break down the information in a way that is more palatable to them. Yeah. So I wrote a book called The Smart Money Woman it uses stories. It tells the story of five African girls, their struggles with money, family, all of that. So it uses stories to teach the lessons. What do you think that you could be doing better? Because the reality is you can say, oh, come to the tax office and talk to us, we're a friendly face, you know, pay your taxes sure. and all of that. And it sounds great. But the reality is no one wants to come to the tax office. <laughs> you know, tax people don't sound like your friend. They just yeah. want to take your money yeah. and you're, you already feel like you're doing all this work. So what are you doing to make it more interesting, like more um, engaging for a millennial audience? So we, we have a lot of engagements that we do. One of them, I'll tell you, I'll start from my area of expertise yeah. online. Our website is mm. full of information. I would encourage anyone who's going to uh, deal with FIRS initially, go to our website, click on e-services. You'll see all the e-services. We have mm. available to you um, the step-by-step -step guides on how to do anything yeah. regarding tax, all the way from filing to getting your receipts, to getting your tax clearance, mm. to getting your payment alerts, all the processes all online with a guide. Mm. So that helps you out, it builds a basis. Mm. So nobody can tell you what's not there and you know, give you wrong information. With regards to engaging with the general public and millennials, we do a lot of initiatives like with the entertainment industry. Yeah. With Nollywood, we do a lot of sponsorships. We do a lot of um, ads with that, jingles, seasonal events. We engage with, collaborate with um, the private sector a lot. 
from consulting firms with uh, Nollywood for entertainment. Mm. We have and we have um, impact workshops with them as well. We also work with government, all tiers of government, where we collaborate and we do educational services. Mm. And that's all in an effort to you know get feedback also because when we engage with them is when we we'll hear oh you guys are this doing it this way you're not supposed <laughs> to have done it this way so it's and i think what we need to do, put in mind is that this is not something we're going to perfect it in a day mm. or a year it's something that's gradual but what's happening is that when we're putting a face to firs mm. it's not just the government you can now say oh look i know that the tax practitioner in my area my local government he comes in he education you know he educates us about things going on so we're just trying to build that relationship and that collaboration with the general public. The general public. And I think yeah. once that happens, the guards will come down, people will be more receptive to taxation and they will be more receptive to voluntary comply. Mm. So tell me the impact, because you focus on technology, you are the technological brain behind yeah. the FIRS, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Special Advisor. Um, so tell us, you know, what impact technology has had on, you know, improving things? Because you have fantastic numbers like in 24 months you raised 7.3 trillion um, naira which was basically unheard of prior to your boss's like tenor yeah. so what impact has technology had on being able to generate that kind of revenue okay um first of all i would like to take all the credit says technology <laughs> that did that but it's a it's a number of things technology being one of them mm. and i'll talk i'll speak a little bit on all mm. technology what we did is we put all our taxation practices online so from e-filing, you don't have to go into a store and fill out a form in the tax office. You can do that online. Mm. From e-tax clearance, you can do that online, fill out the form, get your tax clearance on alerts and emails. You can do that all online without engaging a tax office. Yeah. We then started doing certain initiatives to bring things closer. Before, back in the days, if you're doing your taxes, you'd have to go to the tax office where you register. So if you did it in Kano and you've moved to Lagos, you'd, you'd have, have to have fly. To fly. <laughs> but now we've done it to the nearest tax office available, which you can find online on our mm. website. You can look, you can put your location and it tell you the closest tax offices to you. Walk into any one of them if you want to do and register. Mm. That made that impact alone. Made things a yeah, lot easier. Because if I owed 10 Naira and I had to fly to Kano and I wait and say, look, ticket is going to cost me 50K. <laughs> is it really Naira. worth it? Let them come and find me. <laughs> so the thing is that doing that allowed that to generate. Yeah. And then we also had a lot of initiatives by collaborating with government. A lot of our policies got re amended to make it more conducive to the taxpayers. Mm. That alone, all that makes it a conducive business and working environment and collaboration between the taxpayers and us, okay. which is what we want to encourage. That's amazing. But with any system, especially in Nigeria, you're still operating in Nigeria where we have different challenges and different struggles. Do you find that even though you've incorporated this whole online um, platform, yeah. people still have to manually follow up to actually you know, get to the point where they can hold their tax clearance in their hand? Sure. So uh, my, my best answer for that would be, yes, technology is good. Yes, mm -hmm. technology brings so immense value. Mm -hmm. But then there's certain things that come into play cultural understanding yeah. in nigeria is a cultural thing that look i want something if i don't talk to you <laughs> that means you have not done it okay yes it says processing but how long is that processing mm. somebody needs to tell me that so it's all about sensitization mm. and capacity building the more we get out there and inform people that look it's mm. 24 hours you get your receipt just wait 24 <laughs> hours if 24 hours elapses and you don't get it give me a call you know give us a call we've got a help desk line that's 24 hours We've got a help desk email that's manned 24 hours. I mean, those are things that in Nigeria, these are things that are impactful. It shows mm. the value that we want to drive towards the general citizens is that we're here and we want to support you in any which way we can. So you're saying if I file my taxes online, I'll get it at a shorter time span than if I went into the tax office. We should take your word for that. Yeah, it'd be more <laughs> efficient and effective and you're in control. Okay. because you get your alerts you get your receipts and you know when you filed it and it, it, you can follow up with it through the system and you can even verify if it's real so mm. if you're doing business now you can verify if what they're giving you as their records is real mm. and it's valid because a lot of that it, it mitigates a lot of um, inefficiencies in the system okay so when you say that you work for the tax office this might cause a few problems for your friends and family right like you don't look like the friendliest guys people don't want to talk about their businesses and their <laughs> revenue around you right 
Um, do you ha do you get this question often where people ask you, well, FIRS, you're collecting all this money, you're the collection agency, but how do we hold you accountable for um, making sure that this money is applied in a way that has an impact on our day-to-day -day lives? I do know that you're just the collection agency. You don't, you know... It doesn't touch our it hands. It doesn't touch your hands, but can you explain that, like, structure to the audience? So, I mean... I do get asked a lot of questions <laughs> from the general public and family members yeah. around what's our money, what's going on with our money. But I mean, these are things where it's visible. When we do these collections, it's declared. Yeah. When we say we collect, it's declared. Mm. When we say what we contribute to the federal budget mm. is declared. It's public knowledge is mm. what I mean. We have federal executive councils that's manned by the president and VP and other you know key stakeholders. And it's in there is where it's divided on projects that are run and all of that. Unfortunately, FIRS don't mandate what specific projects should be run with the money, but we are saying we're part of this society of we're contributing. Mm. This is what we're collecting and we're putting into the kitty to the general public. So we have a stake as well. So basically, it doesn't really go to you. No. It goes to... So I'll put it this way to you. <laughs> I'm in the tax office working as FIRS, yeah. but I'm also a citizen of Nigeria. Mm. And what it's used for impacts me as well. I would like to have NEPA free no lights, inverter, power issues, management, free. But I mean, those are things that, that, you're that, working on. that we all work for and we anticipate that with these sort of initiatives and with the collaboration with government, it will encourage a better Nigeria for us all. Mm. What are the biggest mistakes that you find that um, taxpayers or Nigerians make when it comes to their taxes? Um, I think for me, in uh, my experience while being at FRI, one of the mistakes I see is that people don't think it's important or mm. it's serious. They think it's uh, it's uh, nice to have or it's nice to <laughs> It's consider. like when I make money. Yeah, then. when I do this. But I think the notion is that they should think of it as important in any kind of thing, mm. running their business, running their day-to-day -day lives. And they need to know what it impacts in the general bigger picture. Mm. You should look at it in the bigger picture, not just in the... And I think the other mistake people make is um, they feel nobody's watching or nobody's looking that era is gone mm. technology has aided us in we know and we see we it everybody we and know what they're making on. we know what's going on <laughs> and um i just encourage everyone to just voluntarily comply there's a greater value that comes with that mm. so i feel like there's a lot that that people don't understand when it comes to paying their taxes like you said we need to start sensitizing people but yep. i think that there's more that you can do so that when people decide that they want to start a business they have this fantastic idea that could one day scale to help generate enough income to impact the economy from day one we're telling them your tir number means xyz you have to even if you're not making a profit you have 18 months um moratorium to sort of like sort out your finances before you start declaring what you're supposed to be paying for taxes yeah. i feel like we need to be breaking that you know information down a little bit more in a language that so, like the everyday person will understand <laughs> i agree with you there's more we can do i mean we're, it's a work in progress but i think when you think of taxation think of it as a point as when you're required to pay tax is based on what you're doing mm. transactions profits mm. if you're dead and not working or nothing is coming out there's nothing to tax <laughs> you just follow and mm. file the process and do nil for example mm. i'm not doing anything i haven't started i just have information there's nil filers yeah so that goes off i think the notion is that a lot of people misconstrued and think that it's oh i have to pay taxes on a loss so i have to yeah. pay taxes it's what is due to government or what's due to the agency based on the profits or based on transactions you've done if you're collecting VAT from customers, it's not your money, it's to be remitted. <laughs> so when you take that and put it into your VAT. profits and put it into your balance sheets, that's where the confusion starts. So you're right. We have to educate people on what it really means to you know, pay your taxes mm. and where the values come from. I think once people see that roadmap of paying to value, it will make mm. it easier and make people more compliant. Because I don't think people don't want to pay. I think they just want no. to be able to see you know, where the yeah. money's going. I always like to give the example of the um, lucky toll gate. I rem it's a type of tax. Yeah. Um, and is. I remember how monstrous it was. Like the roads were, it took a really long time for you to get to work every day yeah. from say Ikoi to Lekki. 
Um, but when the tour was introduced and the roads were fixed, yeah. your life was monumentally easier. So paying that 120 naira became a very small deal, yeah. you know, in comparison to the value that you were getting. So maybe we need to also do more to show, like, this is what the taxes are being yeah. used for Agreed. and all of that. Agreed. I wish I was in the capacity to tell you <laughs> it was that simple. But I'm in that example of the tour guide, you can mm. see that that's from a state, mm. a state that is making very good revenue. Yeah. And it's, it, it prioritizes its projects mm. based on that state's value. At the federal level, it's now bigger. It's now amongst all states, what's the most critical thing? It could be security at the time. Mm. So you're looking to see, okay, personally, Wale, it's roads that you know, I want to see me. this road in front of my house. I want to see government do, but maybe when at the federal level is prioritized, is the insurgency happening in one of the states yeah. far up north? So I tend to see that disconnect. But I mean, that doesn't still mean that your voice shouldn't be heard. Yeah. And that's why we continuously engage. We've got feedback um, feedback boxes online on our website. Mm. Our, our um, executive chairman is always out evangelizing and speaking on it. And we have an open door policy. So, I mean, it's an encouraging environment to continue mm. to engage and discuss. I think you should use influencers. Oh, like well, so you should engage like influencers that actually have platforms that I have a voice I'm not influencing you right <laughs> voice to speak to like a wider <laughs> audience because you know it's great to hear from you from your executive yeah. chairman but you're still very intimidating figures that are coming time. from the FIRS um so maybe try using social media more like so that it's more you know playful more in the context of people's like sort of lifestyle so that they can understand it better. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So it's very a lot enlightening. Back <laughs> yes, I appreciate for having me and I've taken a lot of feedback from what you said and thank I will pass it on. Thank you so much. I thank really so appreciate much. it. VAT, value added tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. That's a really insightful conversation with Mr. Wale Shonekon, the special advisor on ICT to the executive chairman of the FIRS. Now, my three highlights from that conversation were one, technology has played a huge role in making things easier for the taxpayers to pay their taxes. They now have online services where you can pay your stamp duty and you can get your tax clearance, which is huge. So it removes all the bureaucracy that we're used to when it comes to paying taxes. The second thing was, you know, as Nigerians, we're very skeptical when it comes to paying our taxes. Um, we feel like at the end of the day, we're living in a country where we're basically our own government. We're providing our own power, our own security, and we're basically our own safety net. So what is the point of paying taxes? It's almost like you're paying twice. But the FRS has assured us that they are regularizing their processes and in time, we'll start to see the impact of paying our taxes. So it starts with us. On a final note, it was interesting to highlight during our conversation that even though people are always like, FRS, where's our money going? and they're the face of collecting taxes in Nigeria, they're only the collection agency. So they have no powers when it comes to distributing the funds or any decision making when it comes to applying those funds. The money goes to the single treasury account and the FEC, the executive council, make the decisions as to who gets what. Um, I just want to implore young Nigerian entrepreneurs to pay their taxes because it looks like things are going to get even tougher for us if we don't comply. It's really easy to get 
excited about the idea and married to the execution of your idea you focus on things like branding and marketing and you know the financial aspect does not seem as sexy taxes seem very boring but it's a must if you're going to run a sustainable business so pay your taxes guys see you next time thank you so much for watching